So I have a new document and I'm going to start with the uh, lines and points. The first tool I will use is the line segment tool which is over here on the toolbar. It's the backslash uh, and that's the shortcut key for it. So with the line segment tool what you can do is you can click and drag a line in you know any direction that you would like. You can start from any point and end with any point. You can go vertical, you can go horizontal, you can add a whole bunch of lines where you would like. If you choose to start from an old anchor point, a previous anchor point, and try to connect to make these lines a solid shape or a, an object, that will not happen. It's not one of the features of the line segment tool. And so you may be wondering, what good is it? Well, there are some things that the line segment are good for. I'm going to clear this by Command A on a Mac or Control A on the PC, and then let go, and then hit Delete once they're all selected. Uh, the next thing, the first thing you can do with the line segment tool is you may, by holding down Shift as a modifier, you may click anywhere on the, the screen and as you draw your line it will constrain and constrain means hold straight kind of thing uh, uh, so it will constrain with on the horizontal you can constrain it on a vertical or excuse me a diagonal and those are at four, 45 degree increments so there and there and there and also you can go vertical so there are all of these options that you can use to create your your line and that again I'm still holding down shift so as long as you hold down shift you can constrain the the line as you're dragging it around with the mouse I let go I've created that line in place uh, let's say I want to do a diagonal one I can do that I want to do a vertical one, I can do that. I'm still holding down shift. If I let go of shift, again I'm back to placing my lines wherever they happen to lie. So holding down shift is pretty neat. Uh, the next thing I will do is show you another modifier. First I will clear my screen and that again is command A and control A and delete or, and then delete. Uh, the next modifier with the line segment tool is the alt key. If you're on a Mac, that's the option. If you're on a PC, it's alt. And when you hold down that, you will create a line as you drag away and you will create that line from center. The second you let go of alt, if you're still dragging, you have a regular ray, a regular line segment that you're pulling out from that point. If you go back and, and continue to drag your line around holding down ALT, you'll have a line that's twice as far from center and you can place it wherever you would like. So this would be useful if you would like to intersect lines at a point and have them a certain length. Um, you can do that any old place you would like and that is holding down the alt key again or option on a Mac. I'm going to clear these again command A or control A on your PC and then afterward hit delete and away they go. Now um, the next thing you can do is combine the two. So combining shift and I'll hold down shift and alt hold down alt and that means I am pulling from center my line segment tool and I can constrain it on those same angles. So the straight up vertical, the straight horizontal, any of the 45 degree increments and I can, <coughs> pardon me, create a line using those those two modifiers at the same time rather than just one. So I have these line segments. I can do all of those things. I'm going to clear these 
and show you one more thing that you can do with the line segment tool and this is called precision placement and what you do is you find a point that you would like to uh, place your line on the screen and you just click once you don't drag remember the line segment tool you click and drag to create your line well to do it precisely you would just click now my mouse is acting up or my stylus is acting up let me grab my mouse I can click and I can define the length so I go eight inches there I can do an angle of say 319 and click OK there it is an eight inch line at a 319 degree angle um, the cool thing about this is it will save the last line you have either drawn by the uh, the precision by clicking and using the, the pop-up method um, or by drawing so if I draw a line for example right here and it is that long and that angle and then I want to have a parallel line to it I can come any old place that I would like and click and it will retain the that last line so this line here excuse me let's move that out of the way this line here is apparently 207.9 points at a 60.82 degrees I click OK there it is perfectly parallel lines so how is that useful well if I have um, if I'm using the uh, the well, let's draw another line if I'm using the smart guides and you can see the smart guides here this green line that appears I can click along that smart guide and it will retain that last line so I can have a series of parallel lines at whatever distance that I feel like and that's pretty useful now as you remember the two modifiers using shift and alt well they do not apply when you're using the precision tool so for example I'm holding down alt I click you would expect that it would go from that center point but it does not as you can see it started from there and drew the line all the way out to here using those last settings that I had been using so you can't use the modifier to pull from center however if you click and you change your angle to zero degrees that'll be perfectly horizontal if you go to 90 degrees that'll be perfectly vertical you can go to 45 excuse me 45 um, or any of those other increments and you can then have it constrained to that but it's not really using the modifier of shift it's it's simply just taking the precision of the uh, line segment tool options dialog that pops up there. Uh, that is the line segment tool. I hope that helps you. Uh, let me know if you have questions and we will move right along. I'm going to clear the everything. And again, that is Command A on a Mac, Control A on a PC. Let go and then hit Delete. And then I want to center my screen. So Command O on a Mac, Control O on a PC. The next tool we will talk about is the pen tool. And here is the pen tool. On the toolbar, it is the P, and that's your shortcut key, so P for pen. Um, and the pen tool will do uh, some line functions, but instead of dragging, like we did with the line segment tool, we click a first point, and then we click the second point. And it will continue, and we can actually make a nice shape. Now in this case all I used were the single click points for all of those points and you can do that or if you would like you may add some curves. So I will click and drag and you see from my anchor point and those are the anchor points um, those are the, the corners remember we've we've spoken about those already so from my anchor point I have these handles and these handles indicate where as I let go of them 
and, and continue with using the pen tool, they indicate where the curve of the curved line is going to be. And so I can drag the next anchor point handles and all I'm doing again is click and after I click I will drag those handles out click and drag click and drag click and drag click and drag and then I can get back to the center the original point the origin and create uh, this fun little shape the other thing that you can do is you can combine straight lines and curves. So for example, I can click and make a straight line. I can then follow that with a curved line and I can click uh, another point and make a straight line from there back to my origin and then I've got a new shape. The other thing you can do is very interesting as you look at it. You would think um, well, let's just go back to what I just did. I started with a click and then I made a curve. And now what if I want to make a straight line immediately after that? As you can see, it wants to make a curve. That's the how the tool works. It's going to pull for, uh, set that curve from coming into that point and that's based on this handle and then coming out of that point based on this other handle. Well, let's say I don't want that handle to be curved. I want to have this next line to be straight. Well, what I do is click on the point. And if you click on the point, you see that it converted it to a straight line. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So I can click anywhere after that and make another curved line or a straight line regardless there you go so the indicators that you may have seen now as I've been uh, using the pen tool and the the indicators on the icon itself you can see it's kind of got a little star shaped right now if I hover over a selected line it will do the add anchor point tool now there's another place you can find these but I prefer just not to even use those because it's so easy to select the line and then click on it if I'm going to add an anchor point. The other option is to come over to the pen tool and pull just by holding down over the pen tool and then I can drag and select either the add anchor point tool or the delete anchor point tool or the anchor point tool which I call the convert anchor point tool and you'll see why. Um, and they also have shortcut keys, plus for the add anchor point, minus for the delete anchor point, and shift C to convert. That's how I remember it's convert, because shift C, I'm going to shift and convert using that, that C letter. <clears throat> so those are another place where they are, but I don't like to use that because it's so much easier to have this line selected and I don't have to do anything. I just click on the line and I've added an anchor point. I click on an anchor point and I can delete it. I can click on an anchor point and add one, click and add, click and add, click and add, click on an anchor point and delete, click on an anchor point and delete. You get the gist. Um, so, the other one is the convert. Now there is a modifier with the pen tool to get the to get to that convert anchor point. And let's add one right here. And then I will hold down the Alt or Option key. So Alt on a PC, Option on the Mac, and I can click that anchor point. And it now, as you see, has straight lines coming in and a straight line going out and no handles. I can click it again and now I've got handles to work from. Let me pull that out and uh, we'll discuss that here in a little bit. So changing the anchor points is fun but then what do you do with those anchor points? Um, and I like to use the direct selection tool and so by doing that I will click the direct selection tool, which is A, 
and I can pull that out so I can use it. Let's go back to the Convert Angular Point tool. So either using the Pen tool or Shift-C. I did Shift-C in that case. So now I'm on the Convert Anchor Point tool. I can convert it. I can convert it back. Convert it again. And as you convert it from a straight line, or a, 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 a straight anchor point to a, an anchor point that has a curve to it, you must drag the anchor point handles out. Otherwise, it will just sit there. See, I, I'm clicking on it and each time nothing happens to it, but I want to make it a curved one, I must drag those curves to where I want them. All right, so that's the pen tool. Um, you can do some other things with it. Let me move my artboard a little bit. So I can, remember with the line segment tool, we could constrain our lines with the shift key. You can do that with the anchor with the the pen tool as well. So let me click a point and hold down shift, and as you see, constrain it on the horizontal, constrain it on the vertical, and constrain it on those diagonals, those 45 degree increments around the circle. So I can do that, and now using my smart guide to show me where that an that anchor point lines up I can make a nice little rectangle. The other thing I can do with the pen tool and holding down constrain is as I drag out a handle I constrain the handle to those to those perfectly horizontal or 45 degree diagonal or perfectly vertical so let's do this diagonal just for fun and so my next line is going to have the curve coming off of that 45 degree angle and then I can do another one and if I line it up right I can have a nice fun shape that has all of these constraints on the angles. Just something you can think about as you're trying to draw shapes. For example, if I go to this center point and drag I can make a well, it's not a perfect circle. <laughs> Anyway, you can you can constrain your points on those lines. You can just have free free reign with your your angles and uh, you can make some fun interesting shapes. So that is the pen tool. I'm going to center my artboard again and fit it within the window. So command 0, control 0 on a PC and clear everything again. Control A on a PC, Command A on a Mac, and then hit delete. So the next tool that we will talk about is the curvature tool. And I like to call that uh, the shortcut key as shift tilde on uh, Illustrator Creative Cloud revision 2015. And that is the key just above the tab. And so remember with the pen tool, what we do is we simply click and make our points. This time we don't see that first curve. If we draw our next point, we start to see that there is a line connecting to show where the distance is. And then as we, and I'm not dragging anything, I'm just moving my mouse around. We can see where the curve in the curvature tool wants to place our curve and it comes before the point so you saw that coming out of the point back to the origin and then coming from the point to our new point and you can see that I can if I'm careful enough no, that's still not a perfect circle 
Well, pretty close. So I can make nice round curves. I can make curves of just about any direction and make some really fun shapes. So that's the curvature tool. So when you complete the shape, you bring the curved line back to the origin and you can tell that by that zero or that O that is attached to the curvature tool icon. So that is the curvature tool. Uh, pretty basic. You just make curves with it. I'm going to clear my screen again. Control A on a PC, Control or Command A on a Mac, and then hit the delete key. So next I want to talk about another line drawing tool. And this one is the pencil tool, and that's N. And you can remember that N for nubs, because I used to chew my pencils or sharpen them down to nubs. Or you could use uh, N for number two pencil that you use to take a test. And in this case, um, it, it's up to you. So the pencil tool is uh, fairly easy to use. And whereas the curvature tool and the pen tool used points, you would just draw, a, you would place one point and then draw your line by using the next point and each point helps define your shape. The pencil tool is actually freehand. So you drag your mouse or your stylus across the page and you create freehand shapes with it. So freehand lines and I'll demonstrate here. I have a stylus in my hand and I am just going to make some shapes and you see that it just draws these shapes freehand. I don't have to click and then click again. Obviously it's not doing anything if I do that. It's just putting points on the page and you can do whatever kind of shape that you would like to do with your line. Curly cues, waves, braces, um, flourishy kind of things. Whatever you like to do. And again you can do that with your mouse or your stylus. With your stylus, you would press down at the time that you make the shape. With your mouse, you would hold down the left button. The, you would left click and drag to make the shapes. Um, so again, that's personal preference or whatever tool you happen to be using. There are some settings and we'll go into those first. Uh, let me show you here. As I near the edge of this point, this the end of the line here, has if you're on any other point of it, it, it you won't see the icon the same. Um, but if you near the end, you'll see that little line at the end. So the regular pencil tool, the line at the end. If you start drawing from that line, you just continue the line from the previous line. So here it is again, and I can doodle all sorts of line. And you can see that it's all still selected, and that's a preference that I have set up. Let me go back to this end, and there we go. So the preferences for the pencil tool are available by double-clicking on the pen tool icon, and you have some things that you can adjust. First is the fidelity. The Fidelity is indicated by how accurate or smooth you would like your line to look. For example, let's go all the way back down to accurate and we'll click OK. <clears throat> and I would like to move so, well, I'll just delete everything. And that's Control A, Command A on a Mac, and delete. So now I have a clean art board to work with. I centered it, uh, fit it to the window by Command-0 or Control-0 on the PC. So if I make a line with some really rough shapes to it, it is going to put every point where it translated that I kind of changed direction. Okay, now let's go with the opposite again from accurate to smooth. 
and I'm going to try and do kind of a similar shape and you see how it smoothed out those curves that really harsh area here it just smoothed that out and this one also it doesn't have this weird bump in it and that weird angle it's it's just smooth and fluid so use this use this to your advantage if you're drawing a line that needs to be you know fluid and swooping like that then change the setting to more of the smooth side if you need you know something harsh and straight and and acute corners uh, sharp corners rather then leave it to the and <laughs> that was a bad example because I have it on smooth mode so go back to the accurate mode and it will make those corners more sharp it will add more points usually into your artwork so those are an example of using fidelity I like to keep it closer to the smooth side the other thing you can do is fill new pencil strokes you can keep selected and as you see that's what I have set I have keep selected because if I want to modify that then I have keep selected and edit selected paths so how that works is I have this selected path and let's just say I want to take and kind of round that out and take this side and round that out as well so I've I've turned my almost square shape into an oval shape so for example oops I didn't want this bump in the middle here so I have it I have it on keep selected and I have it on edit selected when close and there we go I can change that I can change and I can go and <clears throat> excuse me I can select a previous line and do the same to it I want to round this corner we round the corner I want to round that corner smooth it out looks nice so those are some things that you can do with the pencil tool and the key is just coming in here to adjust your settings and you can also add a so for example if you put um, more accurate and you can hit the option key in my case since I'm on a Mac I can click that and the option key will toggle that to smooth or uh, accurate so I have my regular jaggedy line I don't want that I want a more smooth line I'll hold down alt and so basically I can come back over while holding down alt and dragging my line and you see how much more fluid and smooth that is I can do that again right there do that again do that again do that again and essentially what I'm doing is you see the icon changed well what that did is instead of using the pencil tool it's using actually the smooth tool and so the smooth tool is used for smoothing out some of these rougher or more rough shapes and so you can make it really smooth okay so that is the pencil tool and remember in order to get to the settings you just double click on the pencil tool and you can adjust that as you'd like so option key toggles to smooth tool and I think I'll leave that on because that's a that's a nice feature I don't have to keep going to the smooth tool to, to do that all right so the next tool we will talk about is the paintbrush tool and before I do that I'm going to clear my screen command a on a Mac control a on a PC let go and then hit delete so I can delete everything on my screen and I'm sure there's got to be an easier way uh, but that's what I'm doing because it's what I'm used to so the paintbrush tool is B for brush and here I have the paintbrush tool and you can see that it does pretty much a similar action it's freehand like the pencil tool however 
it has the ability to do some different things to the lines. For example, if I double click the pen, or excuse me, the paintbrush icon, I get the paintbrush tool options. It also has the fidelity slider to accurate or smooth, which is very similar to the pen tool. It has the fill new brush strokes. It has the keep selected and the edit selected paths. Now in this case, I usually don't have keep selected as my, my option that's selected because if I am really zoomed in quite closely and I want to start making, you know, strokes, lines that are near to each other, I don't want them selecting each time I do that. Let me show you the other thing that can happen if you have keep selected. So I will come into this area and do something similar. And you see how it's adding the point to the end of that line and bringing that out as a new line. And I don't really want that. Or it can change the shape if I happen to get too close. And so now instead of having all three or four or five of those lines, I only have one line that comes down and back around. And I don't want that. So with the paintbrush tool, I usually don't have that one selected. And I'll zoom out. and then select that ev everything with control A on a PC, command A on a Mac, and then delete. So I have a clean board to work with as we discuss the next topic, which is some of the line options, uh, the stroke options, and brushes and things like that. All right, so let me actually put a couple of strokes on here of the pen tool and then also the pencil tool with the N key is my shortcut for that and then I will do some lines with the pen tool so that you can see that all of these kind of work the same way. or not the same way, but uh, are useful. And then I will grab the curvature tool, and that's shift tilde, and make some more shapes. And then I will grab the M for rectangle tool and make a square by holding down shift and an ellipse. Actually, I'll make the circle, and that was L to get the ellipse tool, and then constrain it using the shape tool. I want to move this, so I'll just grab the select tool with holding by holding down command, and then dragging it where I would like. So, as we see here, I have all of these shapes, and they all have the same stroke and fill color. I want to do some things differently. Let's make this square. Let's make it have kind of a green color. Let's take this blob here, make that have a yellow color. And these are fill colors, and just so we have some different variety on there. So that's the fill, and you can edit it. You can select up here. You can select over here or you can pull out the color panel or the color palette and adjust, adjust your color that way. All right, there's also the swatches over here and we'll talk about those in a later lesson, but just know that there's plenty of places where you can change the color. So that is the color, the fill color, and also you have the option to have no fill color. And then there's the stroke and obviously, if I select some of these objects, I can change the stroke. 
make a nice purple make this one blue anyway so that's a way to change the fill and stroke color there is this stroke palette or panel that pops out when you click on the word stroke up here and on that and also near are all of these uh, in this upper toolbar that you have some options the stroke panel will give you more options so I can change the weight of a stroke I need to have something selected first let's get this blue one and so the w stroke weight is the thickness of the line and you can go up and down with that the cap let's zoom in here actually I'll need to zoom in so let's move this so it's a little closer so we can see it so on the stroke panel the cap is the end of the line and you can have it set to butt cap and the butt cap means that the line stroke the, the stroke of this path will butt up right to the end of where that point is it will not extend past that point I can change it to have round cap and you see what happens I have this rounded shape this rounded uh, out, outside the end of the point on my stroke or you can have projecting projecting cap means it's a square cap but instead of being at the point it extends just past the point and it extends the width of the or half the width of the stroke so this is a five point extension here that it pro projects off of the end of the of the line off of the end of the path and so that is that's how you can adjust those uh, caps and uh, the 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 butt cap the round cap and the projecting cap also um, if we have a shape that has a corner and let's move this up so you can see it a little closer so I've selected this green square and again going to the stroke panel I see that I have a miter joint on my corner I can have a round joint uh, I'm going to need to pull this stroke so that it's a lot larger so you can actually see what's going on so again with the miter corner it just goes like a miter and if you are familiar with woodworking and you have a miter saw it's gonna cut so that you can combine two pieces and come to a firm uh, this point you can have a rounded rounded corner here or you could have a bevel and you see what that does okay I'm going to leave it with miter join. The stroke alignment means in relation to the path as a whole, do I want the stroke centered on that path? And you can see that it's equidistant from this side of the path to the center as it is from this side of the path to the center of the path. Or you could put it fully inside. So the path is still here and the stroke has now moved over from center to inside and it is the stroke is completely within the inside of that path and you can also move it to the outside and that is what that just did so now instead of being centered or inside the path is completely outside of the or the stroke is completely outside of the path you can change the line to be a dashed line and this can be in any number of sizes and that is the dash and the gap between the dash is going to be equidistant unless you specify 
something else. So now I have a 19 point dash with a 3 point gap. Um, also you can change the dashes to corner or and it's not working oh because I'm on the outside if you're on the outside if you align the stroke to the outside it doesn't have as much to work with and so this one will do exact gap dash and gap lengths and this option says aligns dashes to corners and path ends so basically it starts over on the corner so that it's nice and even or it just starts at the point and goes around so it may or may not look I, it, it just changes that appearance just a little bit you'll find something that you're that you enjoy working with there let me scroll over here to a different line actually we get this nice purple one back in the stroke menu I'm going to add an arrowhead and this as you hold over click to pick arrowheads to apply a start point of path so wherever my start point is on my path that is going to get the arrowhead pointing uh, away from the path in that direction so let's go with this arrow and you see it there and then we can do one on the other end and you can do all sorts of fun arrows and you can even do things like feathers the fletching on the end of an arrow so that looks kind of fun you may swap them if you'd like using this swap the start and end arrowheads and then you can change the scale of your arrowheads so that's really let's go to like 500 percent there it is it's more obvious now um, and you can align your arrowhead either the tip of the arrow at the end of the path or the arrow tip extends beyond the end of the path so here's the end of the path and right now it's set to the tip of the arrow at the end of the path and I can go to the other option and it puts the center of the arrowhead and then extends the arrowhead shape beyond the path and then the other one I can choose is the profile and this is the line path or the stroke variable width profile and it has some options here in this panel but we also have these options up here and so I can change and let me get a different a different stroke because different strokes is where we're coming from if you're you know born in the 80s you'll know that song it's a TV show theme song so anyway um, and I butchered it <laughs> sorry so the variable width profile you can change the width of the stroke and you really need to up the stroke width a little bit stroke weight let's go even more so it's more more pronounced okay so as you see my my profile means I start skinny at a point and I go wide and then the majority of the stroke is going to be that width and then it'll s slim down to the other end and you see that it starts skinny and then gets wide and then stays and then goes back down to a, a skinny point and you can do all sorts of different options and all you need to do is just click and choose whichever one you would like and so that that's in here and you can actually create your own and we may do that I'm not sure if we will it's it's a little more advanced um, than this course is designed to do so I'm not gonna make any promises on that just yet so I have a uniform path now and I can change the brush and this is the brush definition so think of 
a round brush is going to be, well, this is a five point round brush. So we know that the brush size is going to be five points. I can go to 15, I can go to a three point oval. So when I have the brush tool selected, the paintbrush tool, I can make some strokes and I'll show you the, I'll zoom in here to show you what the difference is. As you see, the shape on this path is kind of an oval shape and it's kind of turned to the side. Let's go to a different brush, say the five point, excuse me. Go to a different shape. Um, let's do that round one again. And so similar but a little bit different. You see this one has more of a rounded uh, circular shape to it and this one has that oval shape. You'll get used to these and be able to uh, pick and choose whichever one you would like um, as you get to using Illustrator more and more. And I suggest taking time to play around and figure out what you need to do or what you'd like to do, what art effect you're going for uh, with Illustrator. And while we are in the brush tool, I can show you some other things. Under the, ver the brush definition, there are some other brushes that we can add to the uh, add to the mix. And I mean, obviously, these are very limited. This is what came with the software. I could add a whole bunch. I usually keep my brushes in a different library, and I have done in the past. But at this point, I haven't gotten to the point of uh, updating and adding my, my brushes to the version of the Creative Cloud so that I have them wherever I need. And so that's something I'll, I'll do later. Um, but for example, I can pull this charcoal feather brush. And then as I draw with the paintbrush, I have you know just another option of a different look that I can go for and that's just another thing that you can do with the uh, the stroke on your objects I could select this object here hold down control or command on your Mac and click an object and then go up to a one of these brush definitions and now I've stitched that object with this jeans kind of look, this denim seam. And you can do, I, there's a whole bunch of different brushes that you can add to Illustrator to give you different kind of effects. Um, this is just an example. So continuing on with the brush uh, and these other tools, um, the only other thing that we can do is we can change the opacity and we can change the blending mode. And I'm not going to talk about blending mode at this point. I will mention it in uh, one of the later uh, videos. I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll cover it because it has to do with some things that we'll get to later. But just understand where that is. It's up here. Um, and then opacity. Now again I have this yellow shape with the denim seam is what it's called. Uh, that stroke effect. The brush definition, I can drop the opacity by moving the slider, and that's the you know the transparency, or I can put in a specific uh, percentage that I would like, and then there's also some other effects I could do to it, and these are like style. I'm sorry, not effects, the styles. Effects are something completely different, so I can change my shape based on these preset styles and you you may find some of these and you'll be able to make some of those as neat as you need and then save them um, in your in your styles panel um, as you go throughout the <coughs> go throughout using uh, Illustrator and that's all we're going to talk about at this point um, then we will move on now to uh, ver uh, lesson 2.2 which is all about shapes. So thank you very much for watching this and um, I will see you soon. Bye.